Okay guys, so as I'm talking to you here, we're gonna break away from looking at the table and we're gonna look at some video of me putting these pieces and parts together while I do a little bit of explaining. So for those that don't know, I am one of the des designers over at Art Foamies and I have a few designs over there with them. I will link their website down below. There are some fabulous designs um, from a bunch of different artists, myself of course included, over there. Go show them some love, maybe make a purchase. It doesn't have to be one of my designs, but it is an American company, uh, family owned, female owned. Show them some love and make a purchase. They're really great to work with in your arts and crafts. Okay, there we go. Um, I was traveling recently, and I'll cut away here to some still shots from the Portland Air International Airport. There is a artist in residence there. His name is Jacob Hashimoto, and um, here are a few still shots I took of some of his work that is displayed in the Portland airport. Now, I don't want to copy what he's doing. I'm not looking to do that, but it was definitely inspiring, and I wanted to see what I could do inspired by his work with my art foamy designs and supplies and materials I had on stock in hand. So I tried a few different things. I printed with my art foamies using paint and or ink on a few different kinds of paper because I wasn't sure what I was gonna like, number one, and what was gonna work, number two. Here you're seeing me doing some of that printing process. I used old dictionary paper and then I used a bag of old paper that I had. Is it rice paper? Is it old parchment paper? Is it old typing paper? I don't know. But it is a thin rice papery, parchment papery type paper. Um, I printed on both it and the dictionary paper and let everything dry. I did also try with some inks. We will go over in a minute while the ink was a fa why the ink was a failure. And I will show you examples of the finished work um, <coughs> on both the dictionary paper and the uh, plain unknown paper and why I liked that one better. So I created some little window panes, for lack of a better term, out of my art foamy designs on the, I liked the plain paper better because the um, dictionary paper is too distracting. And <clears throat> we will cut away here to some desktop examples. Okay, here we are on my desk. <clears throat> and these are the, um, da, uh, da, da, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> these are the dictionary paper examples that I made. Now I tried, um, I was nearly out of UV resin. That's the only kind of resin I really use anymore. Um, but I did have a little bit and I tried covering one of the images on the dictionary paper with UV resin. And it, while it did work, it didn't get very flat. It got very wrinkly and it also did not make the paper very transparent, which I was kind of looking for a little bit more transparency. It also was very wrinkly and I don't know if it'll do it now, but you hear that snap? Very brittle. Not that you're going to bend it like that, but if you're working with it and try and manipulate it, that brittleness might be too much. This one I tried covering with a wax, thinking maybe wax would give me the finish I wanted. Um, not only did the wax for some reason reactivate the acrylic paint, by the way, um, but it didn't really give me the finish I was looking for either. So, so at some point I realized, once these were dry, I did the fronts and the backs, but I realized these weren't gonna quite give me the look or finish that I was looking for either. That the paint with on top of the dictionary paper um, was the words from the paper were too distracting from the image and the finish wasn't quite what I wanted. The paper I think wasn't thin enough. I really wanted a thin sort of semi-transparent paper to start with and this particular dictionary paper wasn't that. I could have used wax or something but I really didn't want to um, the first wax I tried didn't work. I could have probably used beeswax. This was Dorland's. Um, but beeswax, if I have the finished item in a window, which we're going to assemble in the video, then um, <clears throat> if it got warm on a hot sunny day, the wax could drip off and like that would just be a giant mess. So that wasn't going to work. Then I took this thin paper. This is the thin paper I was talking about. 
And um, I found this paper and I thought, you know, it's already kind of semi-transparent. That actually might work really well. This is ink and this is a pigment ink. It reconstituted with the um, um, varnish, varnish I put on here and I ran out of the matte varnish so I used a satin and in retrospect, I think that was a good idea. But um, you can see here, it reconstituted with the wet varnish even though I put the varnish on the back side and not the front side. So I knew right away, okay, I was headed in a better direction, but this wasn't quite right either. And I went back to printing with acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. And I covered both sides with a satin varnish, which was what I had left by this time. And that is more what I wanted. Now, I don't know how Jacob does his um, medallions. I don't know what he calls them. They look like medallions. Um, but I was very inspired by the shape and design of his medallions to create something sort of window pane-y um, out of my designs. Now, some of these I may end up cutting into circles later and trying to do a circle medallion. This moon one would be interesting. Um, these are actually leftover pieces. So once I had a selection of pieces that I liked from the stack and I made a lot more than I knew I was gonna need, I cut them individually out like this. Then I took some um, copper foil, uh, copper metal tape I had from the hardware store. Now mine was one inch wide and I only wanted quarter inch. Again, using what we have, not buying anything new, if we can help it. Um, I cut my quarter inch tape, uh, my one inch tape into quarter inch strips. And I framed out each one of the pieces and I used a little piece of tape, can you see that at the top, to add a string to the top of each one to create this little sort of window pane. And I did a whole big stack of them. There's a bunch of them here. Then I took some other pieces and parts I already had in my stash of stuff. Um, I had some painted feathers that I've done, some more recently, some a while ago. And I put a little bit of Elmer's glue on the end of the feather and wrapped it with some fibers and added a tassel. So I did a few of those. Uh, I also added a key onto two of them and those are gonna go on either end of what we're gonna create. I'll explain the big piece of string in a minute. I had, as you know, I have been making paper clusters <laughs> like crazy. So I took a few of my paper clusters and some um, netting I had in my fabric stash and some tags and again a string and I created a little sort of a tag thing. So I made a few of those. I have some leftover tassels right here that we might use. And then I also had some paper beads from back in the day. And these are sort of a paper mixed media bead made on, I'm sorry, these aren't paper, these are cloth beads made on a wire with a little like pearl at either end and a word um, on them. And so we're gonna use these. And then I also grabbed these giant gold, I don't know where these came from, but I got them from somewhere. So I have those in my stash too. We are going to lay our parts out and we are gonna make a banner of sorts. So I'm gonna use this twine that I've been using on this. And the first thing we're gonna do, I think, is take one of our feathers with the key. Here we go. And we are gonna tie it to our string. It doesn't have to be super tight, it can be sort of loose. And we're gonna just tie it in a knot. Pull it tight. Give the string ends a little bit of a trim. Okay, push that down. Then I'm going, I covered the end of the string with some tape um, on purpose because it will fit through everything else except these big giant beads, these now, it won't go through these without help. So I'm going to gently, with it, hopefully the aid of the tape, of course now that I'm on camera, it doesn't want to go through the first one. Let's try a different one, because you know, it did off camera. <laughs> Let's, where was my pokey tool? 
Sometimes you have to clean out the... I have a file or a reamer around here somewhere. Can I find it? No, I don't know where it is. So we're gonna gently try to push the string. There we go, through the bead. Then we're going to add one of our fabric beads and I'm gonna put it through one side and then string it over through the other side. And then we're gonna tie on a tag, string another bead on. Then I'm gonna tie one of my window panes. And then that one, okay. So I think we're gonna take this yellow small one and I'm gonna tie it down here. take, I think, the blue arrow. I'm going to tie it here. We'll cut all the little strings off later. Okay, I'm going to take a bigger one, a bigger one, let's see. I'm going to take the yoga lady. I think in, in between we'll put a feather. Now for the feathers we're going to just use some of the fibers we have hanging on the feathers to tie it on. Okay, we're gonna keep going and I'm gonna fill it up and I'm gonna use as much of the stuff that I've created as I can. I don't necessarily need to use all of it, but I want to fill it up and make it pretty full. I want to use all the feathers and I want to use um, all of the um, paper cluster tags. So we'll see how far we get and I will speed through the process and I'll be right back.
back when I was on another design team, I did this banner above my head. I'll get a better picture of it in a minute uh, for that design team. And I loved it so much, I decided I really wanted one for the other window, which is, and then I saw Jacob um, Hashimoto's, I keep wanting to say Jacob Hiroshima, Jacob Hashimoto's artwork at the airport, and it just, I was like, aha, that's what I want to do. I knew exactly where I wanted to go with it, inspired by his work. So here's the old banner, the old banner that I did when I was on the Canvas Corp design team one. I love the way that looks, and I love the way the little art foamy designs um, look like little pieces of um, frosted stained glass or little pieces of rice paper design. Or I love that. I love the way it looks. Oh. Art foamies, along with all other supplies in your art room, rubber stamps, stencils, they don't have to just be used on journal pages. They can be used to create banners and other decorative art to hang on your walls, to hang in your art room, to hang in the window. Why not? Give it a try. See what you think. Maybe make yourself a, a banner. And if you do, I would love if you shared it with me uh, in one of my Facebook art groups, um, which are linked down below. Lots of stuff is my in my link tree list of links, but check out the video description. I know my the link for the art foamies is down there, so check it out. And above all, go out and create some beautiful art. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.